Hey guys, it's Nick with Urban Farm Boys. I'm gonna do a little repotting video today and I thought I would take you along to show you what I'm up to. Um, I just filmed a video yesterday on uh, the soil blend that I make. Uh, and if you wanna see what soil I'm using, you can check the link uh, down below. But uh, now it's time to put it to use and put some of my cuttings and propagations together and get things ready to start rooting over the fall and winter. So right here I have some philodendron brazil and some little pothos cuttings and i'll kind of talk you through what's going on as we go but um if you saw my soil blend video or the uh one where i was watering plants on my porch and doing some projects you might have seen that i have a really big monstera adansonii growing now on the front porch it's loving life um and i have a bunch of cuttings i've got cuttings of this all over my house so it's time they have big roots and it's time to turn them into another little plant. So um, this is the back patio on my house. You can see the pool back there. We've enjoyed it all summer long and uh, it's probably gonna close down in a couple weeks. So I'm trying to maximize on using that. Um, I have this big snake plant here. It's not that big really, but I've had it for years. It was one of the first plants I ever got and it's happy and it's loving life and it keeps shooting out little babies. So we're gonna consolidate some of its babies this is a little dwarf ZZ that I got uh, in Manhattan uh, not too long after we moved back up to New York and it's been struggling so it needs some help. So you can see I'm gonna start replanting some things here and I have those, if you can see they're just terracotta pots. I actually just bought uh, chalk paint, white chalk paint and painted them. I painted the um, pots all over the outside a few inches down on the inside uh, and then I uh, painted the, the little dishes that they sit in as well and I've had flowers in them all summer uh, and they've worked great there I like terracotta because it doesn't let your plants stay too wet um, the chalk paint doesn't seem to mind getting washed with the hose they're a little grimy but you know that gives them some character uh, so it's a really nice little hack because I like terracotta, but I think the color of terracotta can get a little bit boring. So throw some chalk paint on there. You can probably use any kind of paint, but I read that chalk paint is good for terracotta. And then your, your pots look a little more modern, I guess. So this dwarf ZZ has some good roots, but I bought it in Manhattan like, oh, maybe about a year ago. And... Uh, it was, it's real tiny, it hasn't really grown much at all, but they had wrapped the stems with uh, a rubber band, I guess, to hold it all together, and they were, I just looked at it before I started repotting, and the rubber bands were cutting into them, and a couple of them are kind of yellowing. So just before filming, I released it from its rubber bands, and um, those roots were pretty significant in the little pot it was in, so it just needs a little bit of a bigger home. So hopefully it'll be happy here. I kind of chose the terracotta for this one because, you know, they don't like to be too wet. So I can water this once a month or so and forget about it. I kind of hope it grows, but I have a few other ZZ plants in the house that I've had for a long time too. And they, I feel like they shoot out new growth about once a year. And then that's all they do for the rest of the year. I have one that won, I guess last spring, it like almost tripled in size. And it hasn't done anything really since then, but this little guy hasn't done much, but hopefully in his new home, he'll be a little happier. I like to take my cuttings and put them in little vases and put them all over the house and, you know, as decoration. I have a lot of glass vases and some of those little ones that are like that white one you see. And I've had them in water all over the house for a long time. The one I just pulled out of that white vase has literally been sitting in that white vase for like a year. And um, I have the ones I'm pulling out now, I've had sitting uh, in the kitchen for months and months. And they're, I like the way those leaves look, so I tend to use the little propagations as decorations in the house. Um, but they have roots that are like six inches long, so time to give them a new home. I bought this huge wide form Adansonii uh, when we first moved here, before the pandemic hit and everything closed. I was at this garden uh, center in uh, just outside New York City 
and they had this huge hanging wide form monstera and it was like fifty dollars um, the plant shop that I was at most of their plants are fairly overpriced but I thought fifty bucks was a pretty good price for that uh, big Adansonii and so I grabbed it and it was trailing and vining and it was really pretty um, and then it started not being so happy anymore so now I have it climbing upward um, out on my front porch and it's a lot happier doing that so I like when they vine but I think they're happier when they can climb so we'll start this guy out and see how he does. I noticed that the two cubic feet of soil blend that I used um, to make my soil mix, which by the way, if you haven't seen that video, it's uh, a commercial blend that I found that is 70% cocoa coir and 30% uh, perlite. And then I add worm castings approximately 10% of the mix should be worm castings is what I like. I think in this blend it was a bit less than that. And then I also actually threw in some Lekka for added drainage. And it fit perfectly in that bin. I think that bin came from Walmart or something or Target. I don't really know the size of the bin, but it fit that soil blend just perfectly. And I just keep it now in my garage, but it's a good way to store the soil and keep the, the creatures out of it and keep it dry. So I have all these cuttings. I have a really big uh, hanging philodendron Brazil. It's actually on the porch too, you might have noticed it. I normally have it in my bedroom um, and it's like six feet long. So I take cuttings off of that all the time and then just stick them in vases around the house. Um, these, This little bundle has been sitting in my kitchen windowsill for months and months. And uh, I love that hanging plant. I'm trying to think. I found that in Austin. When I lived in Austin, I went to the Green Gate, which is about halfway between Austin and San Antonio. If you live in Central Texas, you have to go there. It is the best plant shop I've seen in the country. I was so excited to come up to New York. I thought that up in the Northeast, there would be so many more amazing plant shops. I have to say, I haven't found anything as amazing as the Green Gate. I think it's in Seguin in, in Central Texas. Um, and I bought this hanging philodendron Brazil like two years ago that the owner of the shop made her the uh, arrangement herself. It's like in a, I guess it's, what is it? Peat moss or some kind of moss basket. It's so pretty. Uh, I let it dry out way too much. I always forget about it. That's why it's on my porch now because I have ferns on the porch and I always water them. I water them like every other day. So the philodendron Brazil is getting a little more attention right now. I think I have probably another month if I'm lucky where I can have my plants on the front porch before they have to come back inside for the winter. And then I have a couple of other cuttings of things. I used to have this really big neon pothos and it just was never happy. I tried to put it in Lekka. It lived in Lekka um, in the apartment we were in for several months and then I think it got root rot in Lekka and it died. Most of it died so I saved this little cutting same thing with this little Syndapsis pictus. It's really sad. I don't know why I keep saving it, but that was one of the first plants I ever got. And uh, I didn't really know what I was doing, but that those few little pieces have held on. So I'm just doing this little assortment now. I kind of like to do pots of things like uh, philodendrons and pothos, just because I think it looks interesting when you have a mix of different things. I've had a couple of those over the years. I had a really cool one in Austin, but I left it there with a friend of mine when, when we came up here to New York. So we'll recreate this one and see what it looks like. I think I also just threw a cutting of a like regular golden pothos in there. I have no idea why I've saved a tiny cutting of golden pothos, but you know, they're easy to propagate. You can turn them into new little plants. I'm hoping that this one will sort of climb upward and reach for the sun and then also vine down a little bit and we'll see. We'll see what it does over the fall and winter. I have to say I've been sort of into houseplants for probably three, four, maybe four years now and um, 
it's been quite a learning process, but I started getting into houseplants when I lived in Austin, where it's incredibly hot for many months of the year, and you can't put your houseplants outside. I couldn't, it would, things just burned up immediately. I tried several times, so the plants lived inside. Uh, when we came up to New York, I have a room in my house, which I'll show you, we have a room in our house, which I'll show you that I thought was gonna be my plant jungle and it was gonna go wild in there. Um, and I was so excited about it. And then I realized I also finally have a front porch here in New York. And I watched Plantarina uh, put plants on her porch in the summers and she doesn't live that far from me. So I was like, if she can do it, I can do it. And my plants are loving life so much on the porch. I've turned it into a little jungle and I'm gonna be so sad when it has to go inside for the winter. So this is my snake plant that I'm gonna cut the little babies off. Um, there's a big one there and then a smaller one that I noticed as I was taking it out of the pot. So I'm gonna throw those two along with another little cutting that I have into a new pot. Um, I've chopped this one up three or four times. It keeps giving me babies. It doesn't get a whole lot bigger than it is. Maybe it's the pot I have it in, I don't know, but it does keep giving me babies. So don't be afraid, afraid to chop these up. Those roots are pretty thick where the babies come out, but it's easy to chop through them. They will survive. Uh, and then that little guy, the mother, she will start again. The little tiny cutting that you see in the terracotta pot there. <laughs> I put that in a pot and I had it in a place in my house where the dog's tail, I have a chocolate lab who weighs 100 pounds, Luca, and his tail is a machine of destruction and his tail has knocked that thing over so many times so if you saw that cutting was just sitting on top of the soil because it's been knocked over so many times so it's time to give it a little bit of a better life i have this little sort of asymmetrical triangular pot that i got at ikea years ago i really like it and it's just sort of the right size for that snake plant so that it might appreciate a bigger pot than that um, but it looks good. I like the, the asymmetrical shape of the pot with the kind of weird, funky, asymmetrical, asymmetrical shape of the plant too. So it's gonna go right back in the same home. I also like to put my snake plants in terracotta so that they don't stay too moist. I feel like they don't like that very much. Um, but this pot has been working for, for this guy for years, so. We'll stick with what we know. We have a room in the house which is like a little bar area where we have a, actually a table that's kind of the same shape as that pot. It's this weird triangular shape. And that's where we have our cichlid aquarium and it's just kind of a little bar room. We have pictures of New York City on the walls and um, I have a bunch of snake plants in there now. I've been kind of doing different things in that room throughout the summer, but it actually doesn't get very much direct light, just the angle of the house, that room. It's got a lot of windows, but it doesn't get very much direct light. So these snake plants don't mind. So it might turn into my snake plant jungle for the winter, which sounds a little creepy, but I like the way they look. They're such basic plants, but I think they're so pretty and they're easy. If you're scared of house plants, this is a great place to start. Okay, that guy looks pretty happy in his pot. I think I'm just gonna throw the other ones in one of all these plastic pots that I have. Um, I always keep them in the garage. You can always use them for something. Uh, I bought, we bought tons and tons of plants for the porch. We'll do a, probably do a little tour of the back patio uh, before the fall and winter come. It's a little jungle-tastic right now, but you know, moving to New York where things just grow so much easier than in Texas. We went crazy and we bought everything. And uh, some things succeeded and some things didn't. We're gonna make a lot of changes next spring now that we have a lot of, a lot more knowledge of how things grow and work in New York. But um, I have a bunch of those little pots, like the one I'm putting these snake plants in because of everything we bought in the spring. I should show you guys my garden. Maybe I'll show you, do a little garden tour. It's just to the right of me, on the right side of the yard, 
we got with this house it came with the cutest fenced in garden um oh my god it's so cute i was so excited about it it was that and the chickens that are behind me in that little red coop were selling points on this property for sure i got this idea into my head to plant birdhouse gourds <laughs> in the garden i uh, read that because we have tons of birds and i read that you can turn those gourds into little birdhouses and i thought that would be cute so i bought like five birdhouse gourd seeds and i read that they're really hard to take off and uh, a lot of times they don't grow so i was like well let's try it so i planted five seeds in one corner of my garden those things have taken over in a way that you'll only believe it when you see it they've surrounded my entire garden they've climbed across the entire fence on both sides wrapped around the whole garden met each other in the back corner they keep trying to attack my other plants they're everywhere they've taken over we have grapevines can't see them i have some rose bushes can't find them anymore uh, i'm gonna have probably 30 or 40 birdhouse gourds maybe more by the end of the season but oh my god they have taken over i'll show you that it's it's not my proudest moment it kind of looks cool but well, if you like birdhouse gourds, uh, everything else is struggling with the bullies of the birdhouse gourds. So there's the other little snake plant family in their little pot. They're so easy. They'll just sit there for a while and suddenly they'll start shooting up new growth. So that's it for the, the repotting today with my soil. I kind of tried to line everything up. Time to soak the soil a little bit and get them happy in their new homes. I really like the way everything turned out. My That Monstera adansonia looks a little sad currently, but I feel like those in the pothos, they just take a few days to kind of settle in and root a little bit, and then they spring up and reach for the skies. So I think they look good. And now I don't have tiny, tiny vases of propagations all over the house, although if you guys have plants, you know, if you get rid of some propagations, you can always find new ones. So I think it looks good. See if I can finish watering and then line everything up so I can give you a close up of, of my work. See what you think. Hope you guys liked the repot video today. Uh, kind of a chill concept. And uh, if you're not subscribed already, make sure you subscribe to Urban Farm Boys. And also check us out on Instagram. We post a lot on Instagram. So thanks, guys. Until next time.